We move on after that to the next parable. And this is once again continuing on the theme of of giving. And this is the very next verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. And so, this is verse number 265. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمُ بِتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَتَثْبِيتًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ جَنَّةٍ بِرَبْوَةٍ أَصَابَهَا وَابِلٌ فَآتَتْ أُكُلَهَا ضِعْفَيْنِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يُصِبْهَا وَابِلٌ فَطَلْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says here and the metal, the parable, the example of those who spend their wealth seeking Allah's pleasure and they are sure of Allah's reward for themselves is like a garden on high ground which is then hit by a downpour of rain so it yields its fruit in double and even if it is not hit by a downpour then even a drizzle is sufficient and Allah is all seeing of what you do and so here is the parable of the reward of giving your sadaqah seeking Allah's pleasure. And so first Allah mentioned the parable of the hypocrite and the person of riya who shows off his good deeds. Allah first mentioned that in the previous verse. Why? So that the believer fears and doesn't fall into this trap of shaitan. Then Allah mentioned this next parable to give comfort to the believers and reassure them of their reward if the condition is that they give the, that they give their sadaqah sincerely and tathbitam min anfusihim they are sure of Allah's reward they have ikhlas and they don't have any doubt in their hearts concerning the reward for this for this sadaqah as long as it is done with ikhlas and so this certainty that one dollar that you give fi sabilillah is far better than a million dollars held, held back not given for the sake of Allah this certainty that you have in your heart this is a deep belief in your heart that you have to have if you want the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your charity. And so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares the sadaqah of the believer who is sincere. Allah compares it to a high fertile ground. And so a garden that you have on a high ground it receives better sunlight and breeze and so it produces better fruit and also the rain that it receives it hits onto this ground first and then the rain goes down the valley streams to other places but gardens that are on low ground 
they receive this water that comes with it, filth. Because it's mixed with the earth. Whereas a garden that is on high fertile ground, it receives the rain first. And it doesn't get flooded. And it also receives better sunlight and a better breeze. And so it produces better fruit. Now, if you add to that a heavy downpouring of rain, as Allah mentions here, then it will produce double of what it would produce on, let's say, average rain. Or it would produce double compared to any other garden. And then Allah says, even if it does not receive a downpouring of rain, even a drizzle is sufficient for it. Why? Because of its location. It is on this high fertile ground. And so this is how your charity is when you give it for no other reason than Allah's pleasure. And you are certain that Allah will reward you for it. And so if you give a lot, this is compared to that downpouring of rain. The reward will be great. But even if you did not give a lot, you will be rewarded greatly. And that is compared to the drizzle. And so Allah says, even if that garden does not receive a downpouring of rain, it just receives a drizzle, it would produce fine and good fruit. Likewise is your sadaqah. As long as you do it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are certain of the reward of Allah. If you give a lot, you'll be rewarded greatly. Even if you give a little, you'll be rewarded greatly. The Prophet wasallam said, whoever gives in charity, the value of a date that he earned through lawful methods, and Allah only accepts that which is pure. Allah accepts it with his right hand, and he fosters it for him. Just like one of you fosters his baby horse. Until it becomes like a mountain. Meaning that small amount of sadaqah that you give. One date. As long as, you know, you keep in mind the condition of ikhlas, seeking the reward of Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah, being certain, having this yaqeen in your heart of the reward of Allah, making sure you don't annul your sadaqah through al-man wal-adha as we spoke about in the previous parable, making sure that what you earn is halal and what you're giving is halal, and you're giving it in the right places, making sure all of these things are there. As long as you do that, no matter how small your sadaqah is, Allah fosters it, Allah nourishes it, Allah allows it to grow, as the Prophet ﷺ says here, until it becomes like a mountain. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes, Wallahu bima ta'maluna basir. And Allah is all seeing of what you do. The ending of this verse teaches us that matters that are related to intention are only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who gives sincerely? Who doesn't give sincerely? Who gives seeking the pleasure of Allah? Who gives for the sake of showing off 
all of this is related to the intention which is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah concludes by saying, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seeing of what you're doing. Meaning that Allah sees the apparent and He also sees what is in our hearts. And so we shouldn't judge others, but rather we should only go based on what is apparent. As for what is in our hearts, whether we will be rewarded or not, the knowledge of that only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among the lessons that we learn from this parable is, first of all, the only sadaqah, the only charity that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is given sincerely for His sake. With Iman, with Ikhlas, with a Siddiq, truthfulness, knowing that, knowing deep down inside that this Sadaqah is far better than anything in the world, that this one dollar that I'm giving for the sake of Allah, it is better than a thousand dollars that I hold back. This is the only charity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. And so we need to keep this in mind. And we need to be extremely careful. Which is why before you give, try your best to bring these ideas to mind. To have this intention in your heart. That's why before you give, try to conceal your sadaqah as much as you can. Make sure that when you're about to give, that you're giving at a time and a place where it is concealed as much as possible. Other people are not aware that you have given. Why? Because it is more likely that you won't fall into a riyat. It is more likely that you won't fall into that danger of showing off your good deeds and then having your, your good deeds nullified and cancelled. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِن If you were to give your sadaqat publicly, outwardly, apparently, in تُبْدُ sadaqat if you were to do it publicly in front of the public and in front of others it's a good thing meaning that giving charity in general it's a good thing but if you were to conceal it hide it and then give it to the poor that is far better Allah says that is far better for you. And this is what it refers to. This is what it refers to. It refers to al-ikhlas. It is far better for you and for your ikhlas and for your iman. And to preserve and maintain and guarantee your reward in the akhir. The second lesson that we learn from this parable is that what matters is not how much you give but rather what matters is how sincere you are with what you gave regardless of how small it is and so what is in our hearts is more significant than what may be in our hands and our pockets what is in our hearts is more significant and more important to rectify than what is in our hands of this wealth and our pockets that we want to give. It doesn't matter how much you give. It doesn't matter whether it's a small amount or a huge amount. 
that's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at. But rather, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at is what is in your heart of iman and ikhlas and a lack of riya. That is what is more important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so someone who may give thousands and even millions if he does not do it sincerely for the sake of Allah then all of that wealth that he gave it goes to waste as opposed to you if you gave one dollar, two dollars, five dollars a small amount but yet you gave it sincerely for the sake of Allah you gave it seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You gave it hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being certain of the reward of Allah. Then what you gave is far better than what others give. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ikhlas in every single good deed that we do we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us iman and ikhlas and yaqeen and certainty we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our good deeds and our sadaqat and our charities we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us and not to allow any of it to go to waste wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته